Okay, so good afternoon again, everyone. We hope everyone settled in. So I am Nina. I'm an intern from the Ateneo Salt Institute. So for our next segment, we have Miss Mary Joy Torres to tackle video conference initiatives in the time of the pandemic and tips on the role of teacher during video conferences. So Miss Torres is a junior high school social science teacher from the Sacred Heart School Ateneo de Cebu. So let's all give her a warm welcome. Thank you very much for that, Ms. Linia. So I'd like to call on everyone to participate in this very short sharing. And we will be starting our sharing today by invoking God's presence. Let's acknowledge God within us, around us, and among us as we pray in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, our Creator, thank you very much for this opportunity to be here with this brilliant educators and professionals i hope and i pray that whatever is shared for this afternoon will also be put into good new good use as we are going to be starting off with our classes and as we educate also for global citizenship most sacred heart of jesus have mercy on us mother mary mother of god pray for us saint ignatius of loyola Pray for us. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. I have a personal confession to make. Number one, since the pandemic happens once in our lifetime, I might do something different as well. So this is something different for me. And actually, I am just challenging myself want to share to you something that we also practice as a school. And I am just taking all the courage that I have to be with you this afternoon. My second confession would be this. I am skeptic about this philosophy known as the law of attraction. But this philosophy became my reality today. And I am very much honored to be with you this afternoon. So these are all my personal confessions. So I am Mary Joy Torres, and I will be sharing to you video conference initiatives at the time of the pandemic and beyond. Let's start with our sharing this afternoon with a self-reflection, and we call this as put a finger down challenge. I think we are all familiar with this since this is a TikTok craze. And there are only four guides to this. Number one, kindly place your not so busy hand in front of your camera and please turn on your camera as well. I'm now seeing some people who are already putting their uh, hand up. Thank you very much. I'm seeing Shansi Chick here. Thank you. Next, let's also Raise this now, uh, not so busy hand, and please listen to the statements that I am going to be giving out. And number four, kindly put a finger down if the statement is relatable to you. Yung totoo, okay? Let's go millennials, those who are feeling millennials for now. Let's start with statement number one. I apply the principles of ADL in the delivery of my lessons. Kindly reflect. And are we able to do that? Second, I had my share of best and worst time in online classes. I think I'm guilty of that. I had my best and worst time. Imagine I was delivering a lesson and it was not the class that is, in, that is intended to be delivered, my goodness. Number three, so I am guilty of that. Third statement, I explore different ways of presenting my lessons. I think we all did this because we are now having digital natives. So we try to really do something to make our lessons no, more relevant to our students. Fourth, I expanded my academic networks through this online setup. Honestly, I did that because there's an opportunity to expand. And of course, the fifth uh, statement here, 
I would like my students to have more opportunities for worthwhile interactions. And I think I too want to have that. So thank you for sharing your reflections. You can call me Joy. I've taught since 2001. So wag niyo na lang bilangin, please. I've taught since 2001. And I utilize both conventional and progressive approaches to teaching and learning. I started out as teacher-centered, and then we become student-centered, and now we are moving towards the digital zone. So sometimes I'm even drowning with the thought that I will be teaching online. Next slide, please. But my classroom experiences served as my inspiration in writing and publishing three textbooks on Philippine history. This was my first book. Then we have world history. And of course, we have economics, which was published just this year. So these were all inspired from what I have experienced in school. As a teacher, a personal question bothered me. And that is, This one, napaganun talaga ako, how can I make learning more relevant to my students? Most especially that we are now journeying in this online platform. That's why I ventured into this video conferencing platform known as Global Generation. So I'll just share to you a few things about Global Generation. It's an education program from the Tony Blair Institute for Global Citizenship. Then this is for learners 13 to 17 years old, which where I am also teaching since I am in the junior high. And the goal is to equip the students with knowledge, skills, and attitudes to become active and open-minded global citizens. That's really one thing that is already required of us now. We teach for global citizenship because we live in a global village. You might be asking me, why do we have to consider video conference in our teaching and learning process? So I'll just share to you some reasons why I go into video conference. First reason here, it's cost effective, meaning to say we need not prepare a lot of school resources. Before, when we were still having this, particular platform still operational in our school, I usually go to the dashboard for video conferences. I check out topics that are related to my subject. Then I book a reservation that is complementary to my time in school and wait for the confirmation. Once the confirmation is there, I gather my students and we start a video conference. Now it's even easier because we are in the online platform. So you just have to send the link directly to your students and wait for that particular conference. Then we have the second reason. My second reason is for enrichment. As we all know, we teach for lessons that are found in our textbooks or in other search engines. This time, if you're able to use video conference, there is a third dimension to it. And those are the narratives that are being shared by people who, who are participating in this video conference. Our students are able to have very rich and sincere insights out from the sharing and the experiences of those students who participate in the video conference. And this could be my third reason, global citizenship. We're able to expose our students to different people since this is present in 30 countries and they're able to learn how people live their lives the way they think and they're able to see connections and similarities. Other than that, this video conference is also a stepping stone for global citizenship, which was also one of the major strands in the recently concluded second colloquium, Jesse Do Global 2021, wherein we are, called, we are all called or invited to teach for global citizenship. You can even see our president there. So I have here some of the pictures 
as to how we were able to conduct the video conference. The first few pictures are still related to at the time when we were still doing face-to-face. -face. So you can see here different students participating in the video conference. And I remember we're able to have a lot of conferences happening when it's December, since December is Human Rights Month. And there are so many discussions about human rights all over the world. It might be to a different degree, but yet we share in this common concern on human rights. But then the pand pandemic took place and everything changed. We are all really unprepared to see everything or a lot of things change. Here in our own school, we're able to have full migration to online classes. We call it as the Ateneo Harper Online. Then we embrace the async and the sync periods. In this case, since I'm teaching social studies, we're given three meetings per cycle for grades nine and 10. And then for grades seven to eight, it's 2.5 meetings per cycle. Then we also considered our student screen time since it's not also healthy that our students will be facing the monitor for a very long hour. And with that, instru instruction time was also limited. In this case, we're able to have it within 30 to 50 minutes to be able to deliver our agenda for the day. So as somebody who is into video conference, I had to look for ways to sustain the program. That's why we were able to have our own video conference initiatives in the time of the pandemic, which was independent from what video conference the global generation gave us. So we have here, first is we have our alumni sharing on overseas education in the face of COVID-19. So here we were able to invite our student who is now in Singapore and also our student who is based in Canada to speak about how it is to study abroad in the face of COVID-19, it would have been very challenging. Then we also had another one. These were virtual reunions celebrating the 25th anniversary of the Sacred Heart School Ateneo de Cebu and Eco Gakuen Cultural Exchange Program. So what we did here, we invited gentlemen who participated in the program, and then they shared about their memories of the program how the program is able to help them. And eventually they ended these conversations with words of encouragement, most especially that we are still faced with a pandemic. Next slide, the most recent that we had was with our partner school in Taiwan. This is a video conference with St. Aloysius Gonzaga, Taiwan. And we had the theme collective experiences at the time of uncertainty. And here they were talking about what they felt and what they have realized from the pandemic. And what was really remarkable here was our Ateneo Harpers were so encouraging when they really wanted our Taiwanese students to speak in English. Because as we all know, they were still really trying their very best to expose themselves with the language. And also, the Ateneo Harters were able to learn from the Taiwanese a reinforcement on Mandarin. Because if you can see on the screen, our Taiwanese students were typing in characters in Mandarin, and our students were the ones who were deciphering it in English. So I'd like to give kudos to our Chinese teachers who are here. It's also our way to reinforce the Chinese language. So as teachers, how do we sustain video conference in the new normal? So what I will be sharing to you are suggestions based on how we experience video conferencing at this time, independent also from what Global Generation is providing to us. So number one is we establish connections with schools. I remember other than those schools that we mentioned, we also had a video conference with Ateneo de Davao and we spoke about building resilience in the time of pandemic. We were able to talk and we were able to speak with the student council leaders. Then we also have cross-oriented groups and of course, community resources. We also 
had our parents to talk about certain issues. I remember a student of mine invited her dad to come over to our virtual classroom and the dad spoke about human rights. Since he, was, oh, he is a judge in a regional trial court, so it was able to expand our conversation of human rights. Then the second one, of course, we have to determine parameters with our teacher counterpart. It's really very important because there might be some issues that are very sensitive. And if, for instance, the conversation is already going astray, it's high time that we bring them back to the basic point of the conversation. Here, what we did are as follows. We also identify the go and the no-go zones in a conversation. What's the limit of the conversation? Then, of course, since we are dealing with minors, we send and collect parent consent from the conference participants. Then third, we also provided proper scaffolding. So we walk the students, the students through the process of the video conference. So how were we able to do that? First thing, we're able to expose the students to the concepts that we will be highlighting during the conference. So if we will be talking about human rights, about global warming, about poverty, it should be really be highlighted in our conversations and discussions in class. Then we also have here, we recommend reading resources to deepen their awareness on the issue. So they can see different angles on the issue or about the issue. And from there, they're able to come up with their own opinions and their own understanding about the issue. Then third, we inform students of their specific roles in the video conference because it's going to be awkward if we will be placing the students on the spot. We have to orient them as to what they're supposed to do, what their role all throughout the video conference. The next one, we're able to provide students a structure for a worthwhile conference. A program is highly encouraged so that it will guide you as to where to go and how to go about with the conversations. Then we also have here, we encourage proper on-screen behavior at all times. So before we start with the video conference, we remind our students to always start with a greeting. In our case, it's Magis Day, Magis Afternoon, Magis Morning. Then we also tell them to introduce themselves. And lastly, once they're done with their own sharing, they would always end it with a thank you. And here, just something to remember, during the conference, we as teachers are facilitators. Our role is to encourage and set an atmosphere for a worthwhile and meaningful video conference. So I will just end my sharing with this personal takeaway on video conferences. Because for one thing, it has really helped me as a person and I was able to guide my students in knowing more about the issue. And I would like to attribute it to the fact that I'm a history enthusiast, being a teacher and a writer. In the past, bodies of water connected our ancestors to faraway lands and groups of people. If our forefathers were able to stay connected despite of the odds, our challenge now is to exhaust all means to organize meaningful con connections through this, a world inclusive for humanity is possible. Magis Day, and thank you very much for coming. All right, so thank you so much, Ms. Tara. So now we will be opening up the floor for a short Q&A. So if you have any questions, kindly type them in, in the chat below, or you may also unmute your mics. Or perhaps you can also provide suggestions if you're also practicing this video conference in your own schools. I would also appreciate if you can also provide us your own practices so that we can also sustain and develop our own program for the video conferencing.
or if not a question, it can also be a takeaway or a reflection on video conferencing, on global citizenship, and from there we can also learn from you. Yeah, so actually, Ms. Torres, I have a question for um, as a student, the one for me. Um, how are you able to measure for how often to do video conferences with your students? Because uh, something that um I've heard of that kind of happens a lot now is Zoom fatigue. So that's because of the amount of Zoom sessions that we have to do for classes and even things outside of it. So how how are you able to measure for how often you should conduct these sessions for your students? There are times that we only focus video conferences on topics or issues that are really of significance or something that is really happening now. We don't really do that often, most especially in this virtual setup. But if God would allow us, hopefully in the long run, if we have face-to-face, -face, we will be doing that often, I think, because there are really some issues and concerns that has to be discussed and perspective should also be listened to in terms of this issue. So it would also depend on the topic or say, let's say human rights, of course, it's really something that has to be discussed nowadays. So that's the time that we're able to invite speakers to really provide us further learning about human rights. And I think experts are really appreciated because they know, know more, more especially about the law about the situation as a teacher i'd rather have someone really speak about the issue based on their own career or their own expertise so it depends with what issue you would want to highlight so that we can have this particular video conference thank you for that miss ninia well, thank you so much for also if anyone has any questions, you can type them in, in the chat below or you can also unmute your mics. And I think more than the idea of a video conference, it's really on the idea of making our students more of a global citizen. May it be in through a conference or in other means, because Global Generation also offers other program other than just video conferencing. But we are still also exploring on that aspect. Okay, so it seems there are no more questions. Um, if anyone has any more questions until later on, we do invite everyone to share your thoughts, questions, or insights from the session at jbcl.online um, slash shares. We're sending that in the chat there. So thank you so much again, Ms. Torres, for the wonderful session. So, there. so the next session will be starting at 3.30. Um, you may move on to the next session and the Zoom link will be available in the email that we sent you with your customized schedule. So thank you so much, everyone, for attending this one. Thank you so much again, Ms. Fire. Thank you very much also for the opportunity and thank you for those sirs and mom who really came here and listened to this sharing. Thank you very much. And thank you very much, Ms. Minia. Thank you, Boswell.